Hello friends, this is Narendra Sharma, uh, myself from IQ Civil Science Academy. Today we are going to discuss the prediction which has been done by NOAA that the Atlantic Ocean is going to be above average. I mean number of cyclones and the intensity of cyclones both are going to increase this year. Well, obviously that is related with the devastation also. That's why such predictions are very important for us. Okay. These are the panel of faculties which you are visualizing on this slide. These are the dates of batches. You can contact on these numbers for the batches. These are the government projects by IQ Civil Science Academy. Which you can see on the slide. These are the Google review and these reviews are also saying that undoubtedly you are getting qualitative and dedicative guidance from the institute by such and such faculties. Okay. Now see. This is the context. Today's context is what? This is about the ongoing North Atlantic hurricane season, isn't it? See, there is a organization or administration, what we can say, United States National, isn't it? Uh, this is what we can say, United States National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Okay. This is the full form of NOAA, an American Research Institute. So don't forget the name of this institute because this institute has predicted, predicted that this year, this year hurricane season will be more active than normal, isn't it? From August to November. This is the season of hurricanes in the United States. Well, the key highlights of the predictions, I mean, uh, you have to remember the key highlights that NOAA predicted a 60% of chance, 60% chance of an above normal Atlantic hurricane season. Means this year, according to NOAA, that is the full form of, I have told you, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And this is an American institute who has predicted 60% chance of an above normal Atlantic hurricane season. So this year, according to this uh, institute, according to this announcement or prediction, this year, the Atlantic Ocean is going to visualize 60% more hurricanes than normal season. Obviously, this is a dangerous prediction, isn't it? Maybe what God knows what is going to happen in future. Okay. The researchers said that there would be 40 to 20 named storms in the remainder of the season. Okay, whatever the season has, I mean, in the coming season, 40 to 20 storms may be likely to crop out in the ocean. Out of which 6 to 10 from 14 to, among 14 to 20, 6 to 10 would likely become hurricanes. Wow. So say this is not wow, it is, uh, oh, Alas, okay, it is a kind of expression which you can, uh, which we, you, which we can sow because the cyclones are going to turn out into hurricanes. That is obviously hurricanes are what they are uh, the intensified cyclones, isn't it? So they are the dangerous cyclones, which are known by hurricanes in Gulf of Mexico, isn't it? And three to five could turn into major hurricanes. So these three to five, which can turn into major hurricanes, can be highly disastrous minded. Okay. So uh, these were the key highlights. Minded, sixty percent more than the normal, and three to five could be uh, turn into a major hurricanes, disastrous hurricanes. Okay. La Nina, La Nina aids in the formation. So if the question is, is there any role of La Nina in the formation, intensification and propagation of hurricanes in the North Atlantic Ocean, then yes, that is true. La Nina, it is a warm ocean current, isn't it? Which is basically arising at the coast of Peru in the month of December, as you have heard about La Nina in climatology or when you were discussing Indian monsoon. Here, La Nina is adding what La Nina is doing. They are intensifying 
they are forming they are propagating the hurricanes in north atlantic ocean it means because of this region la nina the hurricanes are going to increase their number in north atlantic they are going to intensify okay and they can be disastrous also because of la nina as it has been predicted by noaa okay generally the season of hurricanes began in june but till july june but till july this year there had no hurricanes and only three named storms have formed in the north atlantic basin mind it generally the season of hurricanes begin theoretically theoretically this is the time of formation of hurricanes or cyclones but till july this year we are talking about 2022 this year there had no hurricanes and only three named storms have formed in north atlantic basin but the prediction as the prediction is saying the future could be more disastrous because three to four major hurricanes can uh, i mean can take birth in atlantic ocean what are hurricanes well let's see hurricanes are large swirling storms isn't it it is basically a low pressure area isn't it intensifying low pressure it's not a normal low pressure area it is a intensifying low pressure area in which low pressure is int intensifying why it is intensifying why it has been in i mean in hurricanes or normally what i want to tell you that generally cyclones or any kind of storms or any kind of depressions are connected with low pressure in the center where winds comes from high pressure to low pressure in whirling whirling way or in swirling way isn't it so these winds are converging towards low pressure but low pressure can be less for less intensified for normal storms isn't it normal storms normal cyclones but for hurricanes this low pressure will be highly intensified and that's why the winds which are converging here they will converge also with very high velocity isn't it towards the central part of the cyclones that can be turned into hurricanes if this low pressure intensifies suddenly isn't it so basically uh, if this low pressure intensifies then there will be much of the difference between high pressure and low pressure because if it is intensifying obviously high pressure will be a uh, high pressure between high pressure and low pressure pressure will be intensified isn't it and that's why the winds will converge with high velocity as you know winds are blowing from high pressure to low pressure but if the pressure difference is much higher much higher that is in the case of hurricane the velocity of winds will also be much higher isn't it so you can see here hurricanes are large swirling storms they can produce winds of 119 km per hour or higher an atlantic hurricane that is a tropical storm a tropical cyclone hurricane is the name given for the tropical cyclone which are forming in gulf of mexico as you can see this diagram here hurricanes are developing isn't it this is the area of development of hurricanes and this is the area which is known as gulf of mexico so gulf of mexico is the zone of formation of tropical cyclones which are intensified cyclone dangerous cyclone and which are known as hurricanes here and this has been asked in your prelims exam multiple times they have, it, this question has been asked that hurricanes are generating in which region of the world so answer is gulf of mexico got it well so uh, atlantic hurricane that is the gulf of mexico tropical cyclone that form in atlantic ocean primarily between the month of june and november theoretically primarily basically the hurricanes are developing in such in between june and november isn't it 
why hurricanes are dangerous you know as i have told you the velocity of the wind is much higher the velocity of wind is much higher because the low pressure and high pressure uh, differs or the contrast between high pressure and low pressure is much higher for hurricanes and that's why the velocity of wind is also much higher these winds are when these winds are whirling or circulating around the low pressure these winds are also crossing through several of kilometers in the regions of usa and they can damage buildings and trees hurricanes form over warm ocean water warm ocean water why because warm ocean water if you go through climatology we have discussed that the oceanic water or the oceanic surface sea surface temperature of oceanic water is stable stable means the temperature is suppose if it is 27 degree centigrade in day time for in night time then day time it will be 30 degree centigrade so there is no much difference between day time temperature and night time temperature much difference has not been seen only the difference of 2 to 3 degree centigrade has been seen it means this temperature is stable why because as you know the properties of oceanic water isn't it easily they are not going to capture the temperature and easily they are not also going to release the temperature in the night and that's why overall stability of the temperature remains over the sea water and that's why hurricanes are forming over there cyclones are forming over there over warm water because formation of low pressure over the sea surface requires stability in temperature for few days then this low pressure will turn into cyclone isn't it low pressure can develop anywhere if the temperature is around 30 degree centigrade but over the land the temperature is not going to be stable for even for 5 to 6 hours isn't it but on the ocean the temperature can be stable for more than 5 days 7 days and this stability is required in order to generate a truly healthy developed cyclones okay when a hurricane reaches land who brings them towards the land obviously winds when cyclone generates as i can show you in the picture suppose this is a land mass and this is the water body where cyclone develops in the tropical region because tropical region or the tropical sea will so warm temperature so suppose cyclone develops in this area isn't it this cyclone will be and they are associated with clouds and rainfall also this cyclone will be pushed by winds and these winds will bring the cyclones where towards the land isn't it so cyclones will be pushed towards the land by the permanent winds permanent winds in tropical area which winds are blowing as you know trade winds are blowing in the tropical region so trade winds are responsible for for transfer of the cyclones from sea water to the land and when it hits the land it the term has been given for the cyclones or the hurricanes that term is known as landfall landfall means when cyclone touches the land mass isn't it that's why uh, i am telling you when the hurricane reaches land it pushes a wall of ocean water ashore towards the shore i mean uh, the hurricane pushes the water towards the shore what we can see that is known as this wall of water is known as storm surge isn't it this wall of water is known as storm surge see here as you can see suppose this is the land mass and wind cyclonic winds are pushing the water and these waters are going to pile up towards the coastal area isn't it the coastal area and they increases their height towards the coast so this will be termed as surge 
search and this search has been formed because of winds which are stormy these winds have pulled such volume of water towards the coastal area where it is known as storm surge okay so as we are discussing that when hurricane reaches land it pushes a wall of ocean water a soul this wall of water is known as storm surge once it has been asked in upsc isn't it that is what is storm surge storm surge is related with the water which is piling along the shore line along the coastal area because of push created by the heavy high velocity winds isn't it and this water enters into the wetlands coastal area heavy rain and storm surge from a hurricane can cause flooding in nearby islands regions aur coastal area mein bhi ho sakta hai coastal area will also receive what such kind of flooding situation because hurricanes don't come alone isn't it when hurricane reaches to the land mass they are also bringing huge rainfall isn't it along with the water of the ocean which is also going to pile up in the towards the coast so collectively they are going to create what flood over the coastal area or along the island area isn't it so mind it here what i was saying like when a hurricane reaches land okay heavy rain and storm along with heavy rain storm surge can cause flooding in nearby island regions so you can have question from upsc about storm surges isn't it what are the significance of storm surges what are the pros and cons which are related with the storm surges along the coastal area this kind of question can be asked why hurricanes are dangerous isn't it this is again a question question mark has been given and this can be a part of the question of names why they are dangerous so these are the reasons why they are dangerous and as you can see that this area i mean uh, this is about the picture where we can see that how long does hurricane season last in the us okay in the united states hurricanes last this is the season for atlantic ocean first june to 30th november and peak season is august to september isn't it so here if i can zoom this you can see first june to 30th november peak season is from late august to september this is the hurricanes these are the area of hurricanes which are forming in the gulf of mexico okay and this is the pacific hurricane season pacific hurricane season that is between mid may to september isn't it this is about the hurricanes which are developing in the pacific ocean now we are discussing about the pas uh, hurricanes which are developing in atlantic ocean and hurricanes this year the prediction is dangerous as it has been predicted by noaa so see you can see this area this area is having winds also these white color bands of arrows they are basically winds they are pushing the hurricanes towards the coast and these are the trade winds isn't it right? these are the trade winds as i have told you that trade winds as i have told you that trade winds these are the trade winds which are pushing the cyclones from which direction to which direction from north east to south west isn't it in this way they are pushing the cyclone what it when they hits the uh, see because of coriolis force they are also turning towards right as you can see this part of i'm showing you from the pen this part of wind is turning in this way why because of the coriolis force and this part is in the northern hemisphere and you know the winds are turning towards right in the northern hemisphere due to coriolis force 
that's why hurricanes direction of hurricanes is also from first east to south west and then towards north east towards north and then towards north east this is clockwise direction because of colorless force and this is the same this is the direction which is followed by cyclones or hurricanes in this area isn't it well we are talking about hurricanes isn't it then there are few parts of hurricanes i am telling you eye eyeball and rain banks isn't it so i am making a diagram in which you can understand what is the in general what is the structure of the what is the structure of a cyclone or hurricane isn't it see this low pressure area to which convectional currents rise higher in the upper atmosphere okay so warm heated winds rise higher in the upper atmosphere that is in the troposphere that is at the height of 10 to 12 km of troposphere you know about troposphere the lower most part of the atmosphere so these warm moisture laden winds rises higher but the winds cannot enter into this area which is known as i this central part of cyclone is known as i where there is very high temperature and that's why because of such thermal contrast winds are not able to penetrate the i area they are coming they are merging at the boundary of the i and after merging they rise from that boundary in the upper atmosphere isn't it in this way so winds rises upward because of thermal contrast they are not going to enter into the eye so just behind the eye or in the peripheral surrounding of the eye winds are rising with very high velocity very high velocity and that's why they are forming very heavy clouds that is cumulus and cumulonimbus clouds isn't it cumulus and cumulonimbus clouds are forming in the eye wall section isn't it so this is your eye wall of the cyclone okay the central part is eye and this part is known as eye wall so eye wall will have very high velocity winds and very heavy rainfall in this region isn't it very heavy rainfall in the eye wall but eye remains eye remains in a peaceful condition there is no disturbance in the eye only eye wall will face a disastrous situation so here as you have seen parts of the hurricane isn't it the eye is the hole at the center of the storm winds are light in this area skies are partly cloudy and sometimes even clear almost this part is clear stable and free from disturbances which which part i free from disturbances why because due to thermal contrast i have told you winds are not going to enter in this region eye wall is a ring of thunder storms these storms swells around the eye as i have as i have shown you in the picture the wall is wall is where winds are strongest and rain is heaviest mind it rain is heaviest and winds are strongest in the eye wall and this part is known as eye wall where you can see the heavy rainfall highest rainfall and winds are also blowing or whirling in this area with high velocity isn't it so winds are whirling with high velocity in this area like this okay 
this is i sometimes sky is so clear that even sun is visible in the eye section of the cyclone or the hurricanes hurricanes are nothing but the intensified tropical cyclone what okay. well if you are talking about the formation of cyclone it means you are also talking about the formation of hurricane only the difference is the intensified tropical cyclone will be known as hurricanes rain bands the next slide you can see bands of clouds and rain go far out from a hurricane's eye wall isn't it these bands stretches for hundreds of miles they contain thunderstorm and sometimes tornadoes rain bands bands of clouds and rain go out far out of from hurricane eye wall to bahut dur mein ja kar banta hai jaise dekho abhi main yahan pe i'll show it how it is forming these clouds are spreading up to the greater area isn't it this will be known as rain bands and here they are associated with rainfall such rain bands are forming far away from the eye wall as you can see in the slide so these are the rain bands okay clouds are precipitating with thunder and lightning as you can see in this picture so eye wall rain bands are the bands of clouds and rain go out far out far out from a hurricane eye wall these bands stretches for hundreds of miles isn't it so these are the structure this is the structure of this hurricane now how does a storm become a hurricane how does storm become a hurricane a hurricane starts out as a tropical disturbances right okay. hurricane starts out as a tropical disturbances this is an area over warm ocean water where rain clouds are building this is an area over warm ocean waters where rain clouds are building okay so here hurricane start out as a tropical disturbance again i am telling you and i have told you that they are nothing but simply tropical cyclone or tropical disturbances isn't it which can convert into hurricane so here it has written a tropical storm becomes a hurricane if the wind reaches the velocity of 119 km per hour isn't it a tropical depression become a tropical storm if it wind reaches 63 km so tropical disturbance sometimes go into tropical depression this slide is showing you how the tropical disturbances growing into tropical depression and tropical depression how it becomes tropical storm and how tropical storm becomes hurricane is it the final stage is hurricane where the wind velocity is highest isn't it so simply you can learn that normal storms can turn into intensified hurricanes if the wind speed continuously increasing and if it reaches by 100 no 119 km per hour then it will be termed as hurricanes what okay. see what are the condition in favor of the hurricanes in north atlantic ocean what are the conditions in favor of hurricanes in north atlantic ocean there are several atmospheric and oceanic conditions that are still in favor of active hurricane season okay there are several atmospheric and oceanic conditions bahut sara condition hai jo ki active hurricane season ko favor karta hai so there are several atmospheric and oceanic condition for example la nina this includes la nina conditions which are favored to remain in a place for the rest of 2022 i mean la nina condition is there in atlantic ocean and it will remain in the same place for the rest of 2022 and could allow the ongoing high activity era conditions to dominate or slightly enhance hurricane activity if la nina is there it means what if la nina is there it means temperature must be higher than the normal in this area 
and if temperature is higher than the normal in this area it will favor in the formation of cyclones or hurricanes okay weaker tropical trade winds weaker tropical trade winds next conditions which are uh, basically in the favor of hurricanes formation in north atlantic ocean first condition was what first was la nina and second is weaker tropical trade winds as we can see here in addition to a continued la nina weaker tropical atlantic trade winds and active west african monsoon and likely above normal atlantic sea surface temperature set the stage for an active hurricane season and are reflective of the ongoing high activity era of atlantic hurricanes okay so mind it here in crux i want to tell you the tropical trade winds are weaker i mean you know the trade winds you know the location of the trade winds these trade winds becomes weaker due to what la nina isn't it not el nino la nina sorry i have i uh, told you la nina here isn't it so la nina favored to remain in the rest of the place and la nina is increasing activity but la nina is written here what i can tell you la nina condition it should not be la nina here it should be el nino mind it el nino condition isn't it so el nino condition el nino condition brings high temperature isn't it and that's why such kind of activity begins weaker tropical atlantic trade winds because of el nino again i am writing here el nino not la nina so because above normal temperature la nina is a cold current na el nino is a warm current because of el nino such activity can be intensified so yes i am talking about i was talking about weaker tropical wind that is about it has wrongly printed it should be el nino here isn't it so el nino increases the temperature and when it increases the temperature it is reducing the pressure difference and that's why wind's velocity that's why wind's velocity also decreases isn't it so if wind velocity decreases then hurricanes will form because there will be now there will be no disturbances from the wind velocity because wind velocities are also basically disturbing what they are disturbing the a formation of cyclone which is not possible here because of el nino okay well how hurricanes are named there can be more than one hurricane at a time this is one reason hurricanes are named ek sath kai sara hurricane aa sakta hai isliye unka naam alag alag rakhte hain names makes it easier to keep track and talk about storms any debate any discussion it can be easily held if the names have been given <coughs> okay each year tropical storms are named in alphabetical order each year storms are named by in alphabetical order the names come from a list of names for that year and there are six list of names lists are reused every six year but if a storm does a lot of damage suppose a storm is very devastating very damaging its name is sometimes taken off the list usko wahan se hata diya jata hai क्योंकि इसने ऑलरेडी बहुत ज्यादा डैमेज किया हुआ है तो इट इज रिप्लेस्ड बाय अ न्यू नेम दैट स्टार्ट्स विद द सेम लेटर ओके सो दिस आर द लिस्ट ऑफ मेजर हरिकेन्स इन द नॉर्थ अटलांटिक ओशन वेल दिस ईयर वी विल आल्सो वी कैन आल्सो विजिट वी कैन आल्सो हैव सच काइंड ऑफ डेंजरस हरिकेन्स वेल दीज आर दीड पैनल ऑफ फैकल्टीज फ्रॉम डेली for inquiries regarding admissions you can contact to these numbers okay so this is all about uh the prediction of noaa 
and these are the numbers you can contact on these numbers you can make hurry because the batches have been started and the recent batches which have started here that is at 10th of august so make haste isn't it and join the institute join the success okay thank you